I'm Luke Anderson, codename Rambo Ando. If like me you grew up in the 80s, you're bound to have fond memories of playing around all day with action figures like Mask, Action Man and Dino Rider. However, one thing we could all agree on is that the real king of action figures was G.I. Joe. I'm going to get back to fighting the war on terror, Cobra Terror that is. But if you're ready to take the fight to those Cobra Rats, here's a short instructional training video you should watch. Based on the real American hero G.I. Joe line from the 80s, G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra is hitting cinemas this summer. EA's action-packed tie-in takes place directly after the events of the movie, and we played a preview build to see how it's looking. Our Xbox 360 demo started out in the Arctic Tundra, where the Joes are investigating a former weapons supply to Cobra, called Military Armaments Research Syndicate, or MARS. It seems Mars have kidnapped G.I. Joe Heavy Duty, and we had to take control of fellow Joes Duke and Scarlet to get him back. The gameplay is third-person action, and automatically locks on to any nearby enemies. A quick flick of the right analog stick will switch between targets, and while the mechanics work well, there are still plenty of threats to keep you busy. There's also a good covering system in place to avoid enemy fire, but because these are destructible, you'll need to keep pushing forward. We eventually ran into the Baroness, one of Cobra's chief lieutenants, and a formidable femme fatale. Unfortunately, after a brief firefight, she escaped, and we had to roll out to rescue Ripcord from the Mars facility. The rules. Watch your backs. Each character has access to three individual special moves, such as Duke's grenade launcher attack. In addition, you can use the movie-inspired accelerator suit once you've killed enough baddies. The suit makes you temporarily invincible and increases your speed and firepower, making you the ultimate super soldier. Characters are divided into three classes. Commandos such as Scarlet are good for short range attacks. Heavies such as Heavy Duty are suited for long range. And combat soldiers like Duke are a good balance between the two. You can also perform melee attacks and some force field equipped enemies can only be defeated in this way. While the game is full of suitably cheesy Saturday morning cartoon action, we noticed a few weaknesses in our adventure. The main concern we had was with the camera. It works well in most situations, but when your character is obscured by objects or when you backtrack, the camera can't correct itself. This makes it hard to work out what you're shooting at, or if you're being shot at. Meanwhile, the aiming system doesn't differentiate between bonus items and enemies. Switching between targets means you can be firing at an enemy followed by some bonus points, rather than at another enemy. The visual style is inspired by the movie, and includes the likenesses of its lead stars. While the story is presented via cutscenes and through regular comms chatter between yourself and headquarters. It's full of amusing dialogue, including plenty of cheesy one-liners and snappy comebacks, and it certainly guarantees a few laughs. Yo, Joe! According to EA, there are 16 playable characters in total, including four Cobras, and with all of this packed into one game, G.I. Joe fans should certainly be well served. G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra is hitting consoles later this month. For more on the game, check out our written preview, and stay tuned for more content leading up to the game's release. And remember, Go Joe!